Today's Mass is being offered for Earl and Madge McGuire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. So let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the tribes of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people that escaped the sword have found favor in the desert. As Israel comes forward to be given his rest, the Lord appears to him from afar. With age-old love, I have loved you. So I have kept my mercy toward you. <clears throat> Again, I will restore you, and you shall be rebuilt. O virgin Israel, carrying your festive tambourines, you shall go forth dancing with the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. Those who plant them shall enjoy the fruits. Yes, a day will come when the watchman will call out on Mount Ephraim. Rise up, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob. Exult at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, proclaim it on distant isles, and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock.
Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has risen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And at that, and her daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, normally on um, feast days, we celebrate saints, right? actual people like John Vianney yesterday, but uh, today we celebrate a building. We have a feast day for a building, uh, but not just any building. Today we celebrate the feast day, right? the dedication of St. Mary Major, the first uh, church, the first basilica dedicated to Our Lady, Mother of God. You see, after the Council of Ephesus in 430 or so, it was declared that Mary, right, as mother of Jesus, is in turn, right, mother of God, right? And so they dedicated a church to her honor. Uh, and we can think of, of Mary, um, and we can think of the many great things about her, uh, you know, her immaculate conception, her assumption into heaven, her queenship. Um, but of all the privileges, of all the titles given to Mary, her motherhood is the most important, right? Her motherhood is primary. You might think to yourself, well, Father Louis, there are plenty of mothers out there, but there's only one person who is immaculately conceived. There's only one person ever who, who was without sin, um, there is only one person assumed into heaven. There's only one queen of heaven. Father Louis, what's going on? Why is her motherhood more important? Wasn't she immaculately conceived before she even became mother? The thing is that um, if she wasn't the mother, right, she would, ne have, she would have none of these other blessings, right, none of these other privileges. Uh, her being the mother of Jesus, the mother of God, was God's plan for her, right? And that's why she was uh, preserved free from sin. That's why her great dignity of mother of God um, is the reason why she's taken up into heaven. Her motherhood is primary. And that's why this basilica is, is dedicated to Mary, mother of God. It was the first thing um, defined about Mary, and that gives us a very important spiritual lens with which to view Mary. We can certainly view her as queen, certainly view her as the lowly handmaiden of the Lord, certainly as, as the woman conceived without sin. But above all, we are to look to Mary as mother. We look to her as mother, as a, month, as, as a mother of, of gentle love, um, as a mother, uh, a pure mother, as a mother who is a queen, right? So today we, we give thanks to God for this gift of our mother. Um, we celebrate the, the dedication of this first church in her honor, uh, and we pray that we might be 
worthy sons and daughters of so great a mother. And now we bring our prayers and petitions before our loving Father. For our church, for Pope Francis, for our bishops, for all who lead and guide the church, that they may guide after the model of our mother, Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our elected officials, both here and throughout the world, that they may know God that they may know what is true and what is right, and they may enact laws that model that. Let us pray to the Lord. For our community here in Anoka and the Twin Cities, and especially all who are suffering, who are suffering from stress, from anxiety, from fear, especially those contemplating suicide, let us pray to the Lord. For our community here at St. Stephen's, that we may grow ever deeper in our love for our Mother Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are discerning the call to religious life or the priesthood, and for all those who are preparing for marriage, let us pray to the Lord. For all of the faithful departed, Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of our mother, and we ask that you'd hear these prayers and answer them according to your gracious will, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid, and may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name of the, of the blessed Virgin, ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, She conceived your only begotten Son, and without without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. 
Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, 